you want to sound like a scientist, microzymas are pleomorphic. Okay, so just remember that phrase. You'll impress all your friends. <laughs> but what, what uh, so here, let me go back a little bit. Okay, so Beauchamp theorized that these organisms living in our body that we all have, trillions of, can morph into different organisms, bacteria to virus to fungus and back. Had no real way to prove it at the time. In comes Enderline, okay? And in comes technology, microscopes, and it's something called dark field microscopy. Anyone's heard of that? Easiest way to, to think about this is when you go outside on a bright blue sunny day and it's perfectly clear outside and you look up, do you see stars? This isn't a, this isn't a trick question. No. But are the stars there? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So what's happening? The sun is reflecting the atmosphere and blocking the stars so that we can't see them. Okay, it's just the reflection of the sun's light. So same thing, when you look at blood under a microscope, if you look at it under light versus looking under dark field microscopy, microscopy, it's not an easy word to say, a whole world opens up. All of a sudden you see that this blood is a live, living tissue. And this was revolutionary <coughs> at the time because they just took blood tests of dead blood, basically. They never looked at living blood. They just figured blood was this substance that contained hemoglobin and oxygen and whatever else and didn't see it as a, a, a living substance. What they found when they look at blood under a microscope, under this dark field microscopy, is you see red blood cells. You see white blood cells. You see bacteria. You see viruses. You see parasites. You see little organisms in there that look like alien. You see the immune system at work. You actually see macrophages and these different types of uh, aspects of the immune system gobbling up foreign material and foreign invaders that shouldn't be there, these microorganisms. This is fascinating, just a whole fascinating world that opened up um, to these scientists. And um, what was really fascinating that Enderlein discovered and was able to prove was Beauchamp's theory. He literally saw a little indiscreet organism that was doing nothing turn into a virus, turn into a bacteria, turn into candida, turn into a fungus, and back again. He even saw a red blood cell turn into a bacteria and back into a red blood cell. I know. Have you guys ever heard that before? It sounds crazy, doesn't it? This stuff has been around for 150 years. But modern medicine focuses on a different theory, the germ theory of disease. So now knowing this information, this is really relevant when it comes to these types of infectious illnesses because it helps us explain what's happening and why we get them and how we can deal with them better. And I've learned a lot for myself personally, and I'll kind of tell you a little bit of my personal story. So these pleomorphic organisms, <laughs> what Deschamps theorized and what we found out is what they are, well, a couple of things. One is they're only going to live and survive in an environment that's suitable for them. Okay, so what happens with a lot of people is they have a weakness in a certain area. Okay, and wherever that weakness is in your body, whether it's your lungs or your liver or your gallbladder or whatever, when it becomes compromised and the environment changes where it can uh, host these types of organisms, they'll be attracted there. That's, well, I don't want to say that yet, but, so that's what's happening. Um, and these candida and some of these organisms, what they are, they're actually cleanup crews. Okay, they're actually in there to try to clean up the area. Okay, you see that very often with candida. Okay, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about heavy metals when it comes to candida. But one thing I always make sure and let people know is that Nobody is a victim of candida. This class is about candida fungus. We could talk about all different kinds of organisms. Yeah, people get invaded by parasites and they take over their body and things like that. Again, it's the terrain that's important. 
But when it specifically comes to candida and fungus, nobody's a victim of candida. In other words, nobody had candida enter their body and just start taking over their whole body. Okay, there's a reason it's there. Okay, remember what I said about the banana? Okay, and how it will break down and dissolve that banana? Okay, if you have an organ that's becoming very weak and very ill and very diseased and no oxygen flow, guess what the candida's doing? It's cleaning that up, it's breaking that down. It's, it's, it's doing nature's cycle, natural cycle, by trying to clean up that dead, damaged, diseased area. Does that make sense? I know it may not seem so possible, but it does it make sense. Why do we want to get rid of it? Yeah, that's what I was What's that? Go ahead. So why do we want to get rid of it? Yeah, that's where so, I don't perfect lead into that. Okay, so so what do we do? Even in natural medicine, like me as a practitioner, almost every single person that walks through my door, I can say, you have candida. So almost everybody does. And most people, when they're coming in to see someone because they have a health issue, they do have candida. We're gonna, so it's good. So no. you're saying it's the cleanup room? It is and it isn't. I'm gonna get there. Okay. So almost everybody has candida, right? Because most people have some type of issue going on that caused this candida to be there. Our goal is to get the, the candida back into its neutral state, where it doesn't cause a problem, okay? Where it's just there as an organism that lives symbiotically with us. The only way to do that is by changing the terrain. Okay, so what's been happening? In modern medicine, you get antibiotics, okay? Let me, let me tell you real quick what antibiotics do. Antibiotics tick off the body, for lack of a better term. Antibiotics are non-discriminant killers. They go in and they wipe everything out. But what, what's happening is these organisms that are living inside our body are intelligent living organisms. And when you throw a poison at them, all it's gonna do is morph and change into the next organism. Did they do that? Cool. So you got a bacteria and you take a, a round of antibiotics, say for a couple months. Well, that organism is resisting. It's trying to survive. And eventually it's gonna morph into one of those nasty fungus. And then you got nasty fungus. And then how do you get rid of that? And it never gets better. If anybody's dealt with severe acute fungal infections, it is hard to almost impossible to overcome, especially with antibiotics in modern medicine because there's no other solution for them. They have no other options. So what do we have to do? Again, we have to change our internal environment. So. Even in the natural health field, what are we doing? We're killing candida. We're killing fungus. Okay? We need to do that to a certain extent, okay? Because it can and will overgrow in our body. An easy way to think about this is nature doesn't waste anything, right? So we're gonna talk a little bit about food, but that's gonna be the next class where we're gonna really get into food. But if your system is compromised, you have these organisms living in your body, they're living organisms. What organisms live on? Food, okay? So if you eat what I call high residue foods, you're gonna feed these organisms. Now they're there for a reason, but they'll overgrow and go out of control if you just keep eating garbage. And that's when it takes over your whole body. Now, to be honest with you, most of these organisms are pretty weak, especially candida. If you get a deep-rooted fungal infection, that's different, it can be nasty. It can take a while to root that thing out. But if you have candida and you're getting yeast infections and things like that, it will blow your mind how easy it is to knock that out. These are weak little creatures. There's herbs we can do, knock those things out. You start drinking a gallon a day of powdery arco tea, when you go to the bathroom, your stools, you'll just see a cloud, a cloud of yeast and fungus coming out of your body. They'll come out really easy. But if we never deal with the internal environment, if we never deal with while they're there in the first place, it'll always come back. It'll always be a problem. So you can manage it, by eating right, okay? But until you fully strengthen and heal the body and overcome your internal environment, will you ever fully get rid of it? Perfect example of this. We'll talk real quick about heavy metals. 